You just got the new MacBook Air and updated macOS. Now, if you want to customize it to have an aesthetic and productive setup, these are the first things you need to do right now. Let's make some personal touches to your new MacBook. First things first, let's change the wallpaper. Head over to settings, then wallpaper, and pick one that suits your style. You can even choose one of those cool motion wallpapers to give your desktop some life. So when your screen is inactive, you'll see a smooth animation and when you log in, it'll settle down. Next, head to General, then About, and give your MacBook a name. After that, in User and Groups, select your name and add a profile picture to make it feel more like yours. Now let's tweak the appearance a bit. You can switch between Light, Dark, and Auto Mode, and play around with accent colors to give it some flair. You can even change the highlight color for when you select text anywhere. If you prefer to always see the scroll bars, set them to always show up. And if you don't want your MacBook to go to sleep too quickly, go to lock screen settings and adjust the timing for when the display turns off both on battery and when plugged in. I would set them like for 30 minutes. And for extra security, you can set it to require a password immediately after the screensaver starts or when the display turns off. Let's tweak our screen settings to make them just right for you. First, open the displays menu within the system preferences, then change your MacBook Air's display to more space, especially since it's a 13-inch display. This way, you can see more on the screen. Now, if you don't want macOS adjusting your screen brightness based on the ambient lighting, you can disable the automatically adjust brightness. Now you might want to try night shift. It changes your screen colors to warmer tones after dark, which can make your eyes feel more comfortable and less tired. Navigate to System Preferences and Touch ID and click Add Fingerprint to register more fingerprints for quick access. You can add up to 3 fingerprints per account. Let's personalize our desktop with some handy widgets. First, right-click on the desktop and select Edit Widgets. Now let's add some useful widgets. I'll start by adding the calendar widget to keep track of my upcoming events. Next, I'll set up the Interactive Reminder widget to manage my to-do list. And lastly, I'll include a few other useful widgets based on my specific needs. You can also customize the widgets on the sidebar by clicking on the desktop and selecting Edit Widgets. To get rid of widgets I don't use, I can right-click on them and select Remove Widget. And if there are any widgets I don't use often, I can just drag them to the Notification Center. Now here is a neat feature. When you're actively using other windows, the widget colors turn monochrome to avoid distractions. But if you prefer a more minimal desktop, you can go to Desktop and Dock settings and change the widget style to monochrome. This way, their colors stay monochrome all the time for a cleaner look. Now let's customize the desktop icons. Right-click on the desktop and choose View Options, and then adjust the icon size and text size to your liking. I suggest turning on Snap to Grid so your files line up neatly without getting messy. To organize the desktop, right-click and choose Use Stacks. This will automatically sort files based on their formats, making everything neat and tidy. Next, change the default location where screenshots are saved because having them clutter up the desktop is so annoying. So press Command Shift 5 to bring up the screenshot options. Then here, you can change the default location to somewhere like the Downloads folder. Finally, to minimize clutter, go to Desktop and Dock and uncheck Show Items on Desktop. This will keep your desktop clean and only show minimal widgets until you tap on the desktop. And then if you tap again, they disappear. So cool and organized. Alright, let's adjust the trackpad settings to make scrolling and tapping feel just the way you like it. First, let's tweak how fast the cursor moves when you slide your finger across the trackpad. I prefer it a bit faster than the default setting so I can navigate quicker on my MacBook. Some people like to change the secondary click to click in the bottom right corner, but I prefer to keep it on click with two fingers because I've gotten used to it. I also recommend changing lookup to tap with three fingers instead of force click. This way, whenever you want to see a quick preview of a file, website, or image, you just need to tap with three fingers on it, and you'll see the preview quickly. Next, 
you can enable tap to click. This makes it so much easier to click with a tap instead of doing a full click down on the trackpad. You might want to turn off natural scrolling, which makes things scroll in the same direction your fingers move. To do this, select scroll and zoom and uncheck the box next to the natural. Try scrolling both ways and see which one feels better for you. Now let's customize the glow button on the keyboard. I like to change it to show emojis for easy access. If you use the keyboard a lot, I recommend turning on keyboard navigation. This lets you easily navigate through different options by tabbing through them. Now if you want to add a second language to your keyboard, select input sources and then if you click the plus button, you can add your second language. You can switch between languages from the menu bar or use the caps lock key to switch between them. Finally, let's adjust some settings for the mouse. After connecting your mouse to the MacBook, click on mouse and then increase the tracking speed to make it faster. And then change the secondary click option to the right side for easy right clicking. All right, let's set up some hot corners. These are shortcuts you can access by sliding your cursor into a corner of the screen. If you navigate to desktop and screensaver and then click the hot corners button, you can set up to have four hot corners to do quick tasks like writing down a note or putting the display to sleep or opening the launch pad or mission control whenever you slide your cursor into each corner of the screen. Definitely customize and add the shortcuts you like to the corners of your screen to get even more productive with your workflow. All right, let's get your menu bar set up just the way you like it. First, open up the control center and look for the features you use a lot. Then add these to your menu bar just by clicking and dragging them from the control center to the menu bar. You can rearrange them by holding down the command key and dragging them to the the order you want. Now if there are any extra icons on the menu bar that you don't need, simply click and drag them outside of the menu bar to remove them. If you're used to seeing the battery percentage like me, just check the box next to show the battery percentage. Now let me walk you through customizing the finder to fit your needs. First, let's sort out the sidebar. Open finder and go to preferences menu from the top left corner. Here you can choose which folders you want to see in the sidebar and remove the ones you don't need just by deselecting them or dragging them out. You can also rearrange them however you like. So some things are hidden by default, which you may want to see. So under the general tab, uncheck the box next to hard disks and external disks. Then I'll change the new finder window to show a specific folder instead of just recents. I suggest opening the advanced tab and checking the box next to remove items from the trash after 30 days. This way you won't have to worry about your trash getting too cluttered over time. And then in advanced settings, I'll choose to search the current folder so that whenever I'm searching in a folder, I'm only searching the files in that folder, not the entire MacBook, which is crazy. Now let's customize the toolbar. You can do this by right clicking on the toolbar and selecting customize toolbar. Then remove any tools you don't need by dragging them out and add any tools you usually use just by dragging and dropping them onto the toolbar. You can also rearrange the icons and add more space between them to keep it neat. Next, I'll add the file path to the toolbar, which is so useful. To do this, go to the view menu and select show path bar. This way, you'll see exactly where you are in your file system and can easily navigate to any folder you want with just one click. No more feeling lost, right? If you want certain apps to start up automatically when you turn on your MacBook to save more time, just go to General, Login Items, and then click on the plus button and choose the apps or items you want to run. Now let me show you how to customize your dock. If there are apps you hardly use, just drag them out of the dock to remove them. And if there are apps that you need all the time, just drag them and drop them into the dock. Now if you want to add an app to the dock, just open the app, then right click on its icon in the dock, then hover over the options and click keep in dock. To adjust some settings for your dock, you can right click on the empty space on the dock and then change some of these settings to your liking. I'll set a size that I think is good 
and then maximize the magnification. I'll keep the dock at the bottom, but you can change it if you prefer. Then I'll switch on automatically show and hide the dock to have more space on the desktop when you don't need the dock. I will also switch off show recent apps in dock to avoid a messy dock. Another cool method is to turn the websites you visit the most into web apps. For example, for me, it's YouTube or maybe ChatGPT. You can do this by going to the website in Safari, hitting the share button and adding it to the dock. And there it is on your dock, just like an app. If you want to make your workflow even more productive, you can set up separate web browsers for work, study and personal stuff in Safari. Just open Safari, create profiles and give them names and you're good to go. You can easily switch between profiles and start browsing in separate workflows. There are four necessary apps, some of them utilities that I always like to have instantly on a new MacBook. The first one is Stickies. It's a built-in app. You just need to find it in Finder under Applications. And then you can add it to the dock for easy access. In Windows, you can choose Float on top, so your notes float on all your windows. It's super useful for taking notes, even during work meetings, and helps me stay more productive. Another must-have free app is Rectangle. It's essential for resizing and moving windows to keep your MacBook organized. Just choose some of these snap areas to your liking, and you'll have a much more organized workflow just by snapping. Next up is Hidden Bar. It's perfect for keeping your menu bar organized. Basically, you can drag and drop items you don't use often into this area on the left of this little line just by holding the command key and then click the arrow to rebuild them whenever you need them. Everything on the right of the line is shown and on the left is hidden. So cool. Another free utility I highly recommend is Dropover. It's great for drag and drop tasks, which makes things a lot easier on your new MacBook. You can gather files from different folders, then shake your cursor and then drop them onto the open shelf. Once you've collected all your files in one place, you can move everything to your destination at once. Plus, you can access your recent shelf from the menu bar. Also, I reviewed this new MacBook Air M3 in this video here and I discussed if I want to switch to it or stick with my MacBook Pro. Make sure to check it out. See you guys with more tech tips.